to the women in AppSec uh, panel. Um, and I'll just be running errands and running around with the mic, so I'll leave it over to our Fiona, our moderator, to introduce everybody. to the floor first. Is there any questions out there that anyone has? G'day. I'm Andrew Vanessock, one of the board members, so um, just I, I have an interest. Um, one of the things that we do have is the concept where people are really struggling with uh, equality of opportunity as well as equality of outcomes. Um, how do you reconcile those two things with folks who really just think, well, we give everyone the ability to apply, therefore that's all that's necessary? Um, because obviously there's still a huge disparity in the total number of people who present uh, at conferences and participate in organisations such as uh, uh, OWASP. So does anyone... Well, you know, uh, we were saying outside um, that it's funny that we get to do... This. Melanie and I were saying, it's funny that we get to do this panel, that's great. But both of us are equally equipped to do the keynotes. Mm -hmm. So how come we're not doing the keynotes? <laughs> yeah. And I don't think there's like a lack of women leaders that we can look to. Uh, I mean, hanging about last year, we did an all-women keynote thing. So we, there's clearly a lot of women, strong women leaders that you can look to, that you can call upon to come and deliver a keynote talk. And we're not really short of content in that sense. Uh, there's also a lot of researchers that are doing really cool stuff. Katie Masuris obviously is, comes to mind, but Joanna Rukoska, uh, blue pill, red pill stuff, mm -hmm. uh, hypervisor things, that's really deep, deep tech stuff, right? So if you're looking for high quality content, I don't think it's difficult to find women researchers who can deliver that kind of presentations. One of the things that we're trying to do, sorry. Uh, one of the things we were trying to do was uh, have a discussion uh, about how we can encourage more women to actually apply because when you don't have the women applying in the first place it's actually really tricky because we would I mean I've asked people to actually apply and whether they do or not is up to them but I would certainly like to see a, a greater breadth of diversity at our conferences but there's I understand what you're trying to say so um, one of the things that I've done is I've joined a Facebook group that has helped out at RSA and I'm trying to adopt some of those things but we also need as an organisation to help and I was sort of looking for some guidance on how best do we approach this, do we actually deliberately invite certain numbers of people to talk, what do we do? 
I think that could be a, a good starting point because um, it, it helps to have other women also speaking mm -hmm. to encourage other women to apply. Yeah. Uh, it, ten it tends to be that way because they say, oh, okay, cool, you know, like another woman is also doing a keynote or also speaking at the conference and it tends to draw in uh, like-minded individuals. Uh, you could also have your own separate track if you wanted to. You could organize a women in AppSec track specifically. I think yeah. Look, I, 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 I think that that's, I think that that's actually an extremely bad idea because I mean I think there's enough uh, you know <laughs> well uh, for, forums. Listen to me. Uh, there's enough for here that uh, you, you know. Look, I mean Jaya and I right right now are you know agreeing to be on this panel, but you have to realize for us this is sort of like yay our chromosomes, you know. I mean, but the thing is, you know, we can come here and actually talk about technical topics, which I would have been extremely happy to had I been invited to. And I, I don't mean this as any, uh, you know, uh, disrespect to OWASP, of course, because I'm, I'm glad at least that they invited us to do this. But uh, but perhaps next year, you know, we'd be happy to provide some technical content. And I think at the end of the day, that anyway earns us a lot more respect uh, than just things like that. And I think, to be fair, you're right. You've got to be <laughs> submitting talks in order to get invited to them. But on the keynotes, you guys have a couple of male keynotes on all the things. And if you really wanted to have that gender diversity, which I don't think is actually the qualification that either Melanie and I are proud to advertise, you know, at, just a very personal note, um, I work for KPN, which is the telco, and uh, they wanted to recognize me, not KPN, but some uh, awards committee, for being the multi-ethnic uh, female uh, woman of the year. And, and I thought, why bother to give me an award for two things that I have nothing to do with? I have no control over those things. I can't change them even if I wanted to. And it's through no effort of my own that I've managed to be either multi-ethnic or a woman. So if you would actually, yeah, if you actually took a look at the work that I'm trying to do or the things that I'm trying to change on the internet or in security or my call to have, you know, secure post-quantum cryptographic ciphers, take a look at that stuff and then let me talk about that uh, and figure out how to do that well rather than really promoting my womanness which is nice to know <laughs> but you know okay so, so here, here's what I'm hearing and just and, and, and help help me clear help me help fix what's in my brain right now I'm hearing look we don't want any special treatment as women I just happen to have this chromosome it shouldn't matter but on the other side it's like well we should get some additional invitations at the keynote level specific for women to have more diversity. So you know, at, 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 here's, here's the question. At what point do we, do we as IT professionals just need to treat women like any ordinary people with respect and the fact that they're women should not matter at all? And at what point should we be giving special opportunities for women because of the very male-centric uh, industry we have in IT right now. Where's the balance there? Is that, is that a fair yeah. question? Look, or? look I, I didn't say uh, give me a keynote because I'm female. I said no. give me a keynote because I want to provide technical content. Yeah. I, I've done it before. <laughs> I've been invited before, m mostly for reasons like th the research that I was doing. And I would like to hope and think that uh, my femaleness had very little to do with that. So, so you know, we, we invited keynotes that we thought that we knew or that were in our community. Sure. All right. The community people that were known and were invited. It was okay. Because they were men, it was just sure. people that were known. Okay, so. well, let's talk about people that were known. I did the opening keynote at the NCSC One conference this year, and I had the best panel because I had the most amazing people. <laughs> but at the GCCS conference this year, I would consider myself in that bucket known. I wasn't invited. Um, and, you know, I did the opening keynote after the, the whatchamacallit, the, the stat secretaris, the new dude. And it, it, all, in international conferences as well, I've been speaking of black, so I don't, it's just I think that there's a generic preference, like there's a sort of knee-jerk reaction to not necessarily try to, uh, if there is a woman there, that's, it's less the exception than the rule. And it's not based on the quality of their content, but the tendency that you tend to take the guy sometimes more seriously. I don't mean you, but no, in general. Uh, may, may, I, may I speak to this just a moment? Sure. Um, so I think there's, there's two things. One is like, why did, we, why, why did we, the conference team pick, select the keynotes as they did? I was not part of that selection team, but to some degree I think Jim is right. This is like people who were already speakers at, at an OBAS conference before, so they, they went through this before, they have done this somewhere else before, and then they got at some point invited as a keynote speaker, or people who are really known within this community. So yes, you were a keynote speaker, and yes, I, I have no doubt that you can 
give great keynotes. The question is, did the selection team know you? Mm. And maybe they didn't know you. And I mean, that, that may be very well their fault. <laughs> but <laughs> we are all human beings. We only know so many people. So uh, I will definitely, um, I would have loved to have you as a keynote speaker, OK? And I, I would definitely recommend that. But it's not my selection criteria. It's not my choice. Um, and maybe if you want to be a future keynote speaker, you can actually also submit a technical talk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fair and that would be very, very welcome. And we actually, we want to have more women submit technical talks so we can select more. So I think I that's, mean, the, that's the problem. How do we get more women to submit to CFPs, right? And how do we yes. get more women yeah. to that, submit That would be wonderful. Content, yeah. No, I think that's a very fair thing, and I think you're right. We, the, if women really want to do this, we actually should submit. And to be fair, yeah. uh, well, I mean, I have given probably like four talks in the last, you know, month and a half. Anyway, at other places, yeah. so, I mean, it could very well be that it oh, I omitted, you know, it, yeah. it just completely missed my attention yeah. to submit here. But you know, yeah. that happens. I, I, I don't mind. <laughs> There's a talk on post quantum crypto. I would have, like highly selected that, and I would have rushed to go. All right, it. so sh the next one, the next OWASP thingy, you got it. All right, I'll submit or whatever. <laughs> need to do hoops post quantum crypto <laughs> I will send you the CFP okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. here we go I think too that uh, women that are perhaps uh, in the frontier of something uh, it's very hard to be known when you're on the frontier uh, unless oh um, and and very often there uh, is where the the barriers can be because you know you're talking about a new paradigm or a new innovation that's really not known well, but it's important. And being able to be heard for doing that is terribly difficult. So maybe, and if you don't come out of, of uh, some kind of an industry that has standing already, I mean, you're really trying to do something systemic and fundamental, uh, very hard to be heard. And uh, this is true I, in the U.S. and around the world, as far as I know. So it starts early. And if you think differently, uh, and, and sometimes women do, it's very hard to get into the stream. And I applied to the U.S. app set to talk. And I just heard yesterday, I think, that it's been decided who's, how it's going to work, do you know? The one in San Francisco? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm You're out of that. Out. But I, and I never heard back. So, uh, I, yeah, so I don't know how <laughs> it's going to work. But anyway, I, and I think, you know, looking for those uh, entrepreneurs, developers that are doing unusual things, not because they come from a big company necessarily, although nothing wrong with that. But so just, just a point. So, so maybe. Um, I mean, the selection of, of keynotes, at least at OWASP, is purely on content. And we try to uh, take out company affiliation, uh, all this stuff we, we, we actually try to ignore quite consciously. I mean, it's kind of a weird to say, to say something you ignore consciously. But yeah, so we, we try to focus only on content. And the review is purely on the content of, of the talks. We take another question there? Should we, actually a question, should we add a component that we should prefer women? That's, that's a that would be a question, question I would like to ask you. I mean, would you say at this point yes. women are underrepresented yes. and we should make it an additional criteria? If you're female, you get like one extra point in the selection criteria. Uh, would you want that? I mean, one of ten. But you need to have a balance. But yeah, but would you want? I mean, would you want that? Look, you you, you want to to balance technical quality with uh, some amount of diversity. Yes. And, and I mean, anyway, there's probably a natural bias oftentimes to select people at one's own uh, so social circles, yes. <laughs> people that you already know. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And, uh, it should be so, so, so it probably isn't even necessarily uh, a preference, but it's just uh, trying to ensure that you have that right so do the women mix of diversity, which I think anyway, conference, uh, well, st staff uh, anyway attempt to do also with regards to different subjects uh, being represented in different areas and different streams of research. So why not also, you know, assuring the diversity also. I mean, there's also an issue here, probably, of people of color as well. Uh, I mean, this is true around the world, so it's nothing unique with OWASP, but which is very open, I think, and, and has a, a good spirit. But uh, I think getting this diversity is a constant uh, challenge around the world, and it does make it better, actually, yes. to have yes. these different points of view. Yes. 
There's a question down the back there, I think, to get in. The, and the lady. The, yeah. the, don't ignore the lady. We, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think he had been actually, he had been trying to answer oh, okay. for a few minutes yeah. okay. already, so. No, I saw her as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to, uh, I basically have two questions. I've been trying to combine them, but I don't think I can. I help run a couple conferences, and um, in one of them, we have completely double blind. We have no idea who submitted it, where they're from. And we tend to have a very high ratio of female speakers, and we're, we tend to be applauded for having more diversity. It's not deliberate, um, which actually provoked retaliation from some groups saying we had a quota system. Um, <coughs> then on the other hand, I was running another track where the, my co track chair required 50% of the speakers to be women, and we didn't have very many submissions, and we were criticized for, for that. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely, especially somebody who wants to see more total diversity, not just gender diversity. Um, I struggle with well-intended people finding the right ways to do it without provoking retaliation or response. So that's one half of it. And it might be that we need an intermediary plan versus the, when we get it right, it'll look like right. this plan. <clears throat> I think one of the reasons that conference gets more submissions is because it's perceived to be a safer, uh, more uh, inviting place. So it, it perpetuates that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we also, you know, made a mistake this year, so I'm just being very honest. We tried to get rid of booth babes at RSA, and we successfully got rid of booth babes. We convinced RSA to change that. But whoever made the pin um, phrased it in such a way that it was exclusive to, it was just men and women. It wasn't about multinational, it wasn't about uh, multi um, identity. It so, was, it was basically a dress code. It was essentially a dress code for professionalism, yeah. Tell the women what they can and cannot wear at a conference. Yeah, yeah. So there's a yeah. whole other slide like, yeah. how dare you do that? Yeah. So I'm, what I'm trying to get at is there is, a, there is a large group of people who genuinely want to fix some of these problems, who struggle to figure out how to do so. And it might be that the appropriate intermediary steps may be different than the future steps. So that's one half of my question. Take it if you like it. The other half is, um, are there initiatives or voices that are making it better, or there are initiatives of voices that are making it worse. So they're kind of related. Um, but it, what it's having is a chilling effect. So every time I'm seeing someone try to do something intelligent, even if it's malformed, they're, they're almost punished for trying. So I think this helps, uh, it has a chilling effect on making progress. Like, I'm very close with Katie Mazur. She's one of the leaders in the mm -hmm. cavalry. She gets very frustrated when someone puts her on a top 10 women list, because mm -hmm. she's just an amazing researcher in yep. person, period, yeah. and she just wants to be on a top something list, not a top women list. So which attributes of things you have seen help the situation, and which attributes hurt the situation? I know there's a lot of stuff in my two questions, but. Those were two very big questions. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> if I could just get a part of that, um, it's, it's more of a comment rather than an answer to your question. But um, I do think we tend to kind of go far off the mark when we're trying to talk about like these kinds of issues and that dress code thing really is, is quite compelling um, because th there's this I want to tell you an anecdote it was at Hack in the Box um, one of my or, uh, two guys that work for me and my team were doing a presentation on uh, how to hack uh, mobile networks uh, using specific GRX components and at the, I, I reviewed their slides, and at the end of their slides, you know, they had this one picture of Q&A, and we, I tried to make their entire slide set a bit better. And um, so I said, no, you've got to change this slide. This is a bloody boring slide. This is, it doesn't add anything. Can't you give me, like, something cuter, make it nicer? And so I gave them a picture of a woman with her glasses being like this, saying questions, and it, it might be interpreted as some as, like, overly sexy or whatever. But I gave them the bloody picture. And some, there was a woman in the audience that said, I found this very sexist that you do this in your Q, that is not necessary. And maybe she was wearing a bikini, I'm not sure. But if that was the case, <laughs> whatever the case was, I gave them the picture. I did that. And the woman was like, I really don't appreciate this treatment of women. And blah, blah, blah. and I, I don't know exactly what she said, but she was very frumpy um, about the way that she said it, not how she looked. And um, so I tried to make the point, I did that. You know, I think it's also k kind of a, a disrespectful to assume that women don't have the common sense or the decision-making power to decide what they wear, when and which context they can put in, you know, whatever. So that dress-making, I'm not, now I'm going all over the place and rambling, but 
my, my point is that kind of dress code thing evokes the same response in me as that woman who dares to judge one slide on a perfectly valid deck because there was a girl in it. You know, that I, I find that we really have a knee-jerk response to the radically frumpy. I, I, I think that leads to a much bigger question. As, as a man, I think things really clearly spelled out for me. And I think the question for a lot of us is, where does the role of sensuality and sexuality between men and women in conference and work environments, what are the proper rules of play there? I know when I'm working in an engineering group of just men, those rules are pretty free relaxed. And the things that we say amongst each other, yeah. that in just a group of men working, are, are often very inappropriate things when a woman joins that group, changing the dynamics dramatically. Yeah. And so that, that's the heart of the issue that I think is very, um, uh, very harmful in women joining male-centric IT groups how do we get this right as men? And I don't think we're doing that right now. Do you think changing the dynamics is a good thing or a bad thing? In my view, uh, that's a really good question. Um, I've got to be honest. What's the honesty? The, the, this is my, my personal answer. Um, Actually, you know what? It's, it's, it's a, here's a, I'm going to give you a different answer. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a challenging, difficult thing sometimes without giving it a, a positive or negative things, especially young men out of college for the first time who are very often IT, introverted, socially awkward, it is an incredibly difficult thing. Because a lot of my peers in these groups, just talking to a woman is incredibly difficult. Yeah. This guy's like 22 yeah. years old, fresh out of school, got a six-figure job, he's now dating, and, and for the first time in his life, it's not that, it's just relating to a woman in general is very difficult for many people in IT. So what kind of rules of play but can we establish to help us to as be, men? Yeah. To be fair, though, it's funny you say that about the 18-year-old, because what I find is that the, the you started with the sexual slash sensual stuff. That, the dirty joke part, if, if that requires only one thing, a sense of humor. And it doesn't require a gender change in order to appreciate a good dirty joke. Um, th that's just, it, you know, and of course there are some things that will always be inappropriate regardless of whether it's between men or between women, and those lines, they're very easily crossed. What I find more offensive, believe it or not, is when I was interviewed and someone said, how do you do this job with three kids? And I think, how do you do this job with three kids? Th I find those things sexist and offensive rather than some kid out of university who's making a, actually a very nice, valid, dirty joke that even I can laugh at. And I that sense of humor, I don't think we should dare to lose it with our... Yeah, but yeah. I, can also, I, can, I, I can also re re recall one time when I had an interview and, uh, and the interviewer had asked me something about uh, being hooked up uh, with their pen tester. So, so uh, you know, these things sometimes happen. So. Can you hook up with your pen tester? These things are incredibly strong executives who have rolled with other male executives for a great deal of your career. There's a lot of, people, a lot of women, in my experience, who strongly disagree with that. <laughs> that these little jokes make it make them feel not part of the group, make them feel embarrassed. They're, they're also young women fresh out of college, also new to the topic of, of relating to men, to men in this way. So this, these, these, this cocktail of a male-centric, socially awkward group with all, also young women, also potentially socially awkward, becomes a mix that leads to huge amounts of uh, abrasion and challenges in the it's, world. It's, it's just hard. Sorry? I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's the, it's the same thing for, for the guys. I'm from a, a classical, you know, very conservative family. Mm -hmm. I've been raised the same way, like, like if I was from the South, actually. So I do declare it was, it was awkward to, to, to get a sense of humor and get into bad jokes, you know, because uh, I wasn't taught, I wasn't, it wasn't natural for me to understand them. And in these kind of group of men making jokes about girls, about sex, or whatever, to be fair, I think there's a difference between a, a funny, dirty joke and something that's female unfriendly. There is a, that, and that line is equally point. offensive. I, I agree with you completely. That's equally uh, that's equally egregious to men who find that also not done. You know, like how do so? Yeah. Yeah. After the football, after the football. That would be a drifting. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Viril. Viril. C'est bien. 
So just being a geek, you know. I'm I know. Right. Yeah. So what's your question? So first of all, um, being the only female in a team of 20 security engineers, um, there are two things I would like to say. One, um, I agree with you on the standpoint of I don't think that it's a difference of I don't have the sense of same sense of humor as that because a lot of times I get along with them, we joke about things, and it's a good working relationship both socially as well as from a work standpoint, but there are times when it crosses the line, and I actually have management that calls that out. So my manager would, you know, call out a person if they cross the line or said something that is just not cool. Like, so I've definitely had issues at work where, where that has happened, where I'm like, I can't believe you would say that, not because I don't have a sense of humor, but because what you said is deeply offensive to just all females. Right, and that, that, that's my point, that there are two categories, and those things even, so it has nothing to do with a, a woman in the group of 20 men. So, but no, those. from that standpoint, what needs to be done is, at that point, to me, what helps is if a coworker of mine, a male coworker of mine, or my manager calls that out, so yeah. I don't feel like yeah. the only person who's offended by this. Yeah. So to your question, what you said, what can you do? That's probably call what you out. can do. Call it out. Or don't participate. Or don't participate, yeah. 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 There's always there's stalking, there's things that progress from these things that may seem innocent when you're telling jokes, but they have uh, sometimes violent overtones and other things. It's just why do we do the work? We're not there necessarily to have a, a joke and a party. And that doesn't mean you get to be super serious. And this is the point I'm trying to make that and, and I see a lot Silicon Valley, you have a group of men very often starting a company or doing some kind of IT endeavor, and then a wonderful woman joins that group and the dynamic radically changes. And it's often not something that's a dynamic that's uniting, it's a dynamic that's dividing. So what's the choice for a young woman to accept the jokes and be part of the team or to speak up and say something and then be and be looked at negatively for speaking up and saying Look, I think that depends on the woman. Yeah, I think so, because too. Because also, I mean, yeah. you know, some women are actually quite comfortable being one of the guys, and, yeah. uh, and others are not. And, and yeah. you just have to go with what your personality is. So, yeah. so these rules of play are, are not static. <laughs> they're dynamic based on the team. So maybe the Also comes, based on the person, you know, the... the, the respect for the other person. This isn't wrong. This no. This is fairly no. straightforward. Just yeah. with deep, deep respect for who you're talking about. That's but, culturally yeah. sensitive. Uh, but apart from all this uh, issue, I have also seen that uh, uh, there are certain cases where women uh, or the female employees are paid less uh, than that the sucks. male, yeah. male employees say, because they are considered, the, yeah. you know, she is a woman. Yeah. So, you know, uh, her but husband might be earning as well. So sure. it doesn't make sense because you are working at that very point of uh, time and you are also doing your job. Nobody is helping you there. Well, You're equal, delivering your work. Oh, so sorry, I keep well, thinking you're finished. That sucks. <laughs> I apologize for interrupting you. I, I kept thinking you were sorry. done with your comment. So um, I, I agree with you. And But I think that also sometimes, it, and I'm not saying that it's in general, but I think that women really need to stand up for themselves when it comes mm. to equal work, equal pay, and also understand their own value. Um, and even I find it very difficult to be like, that's it. You know. The, we have to talk about my salary, and I can joke about it, but I can't necessarily, when those moments come, do that well. I, I think, I, and I noticed that among my uh, other women colleagues, we have a harder time demanding what we deserve um, when it's not being presented automatically, uh, actually getting that and feeling that, yep, that's it, and also understanding that that is equally what you deserve. And we, te we tend to be much more conservative in that in general, as a general rule. This doesn't apply to everybody, but yeah, I think we also need to be a bit more. But I think the companies are, uh, you know, uh, uh, programmed like that, that the male employees are, you know, the if you, if you come to the HR discussion, they will start with, uh, you know. Well, it's illegal. There is, there is they shouldn't be, but. Payment uh, slabs. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be that way. Um, it, it's technically illegal because you're supposed to, at least in the company that I work for, there's very good uh, secondary benefits and they're all clear. If you do this job, this is your salary, period. No exceptions. Yep. So. That, that kind of pay structure is very limiting in, in especially startup and IT. Agreed. It's really hard to get engineers. And even once you're given a salary as an engineer, when, when you, uh, you don't get a raise unless you go and say, give me a raise or I'm out of there. That's how you get a raise. 
And that, that's a very assertive, male-centric activity, I dare say. So Why do you say male-centric? It's because it's aggression and aggression. It's a, very, it's a very aggressive thing. You do this for me, or I'm out of here. Yeah, but why is that male centric? That might be a, a, an inappropriate gender label. Um, but right. I, I put it in a more aggressive <laughs> category. And my mind labels. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I think it's probably hard for men to do that too. It, it, I it, mean, it, I think it, it's hard for anybody to be assert, assertive in that way yeah, <laughs> when the time comes. So. I, yeah. I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe there is this. I mean, this is a perception thing. So it, of course, it's hard for for men too. Mm -hmm. um, the one problem is the perception of society of a person doing this. Mm -hmm. And if a man does this, uh, people sometimes see, oh, this is a strong man. And he's aggressive and he goes for his goals. But if a woman does this, some people may think, oh, she's overly aggressive and why does she not, yeah. like, why is she not a team player? So I, I've seen this, uh, this discussion. I mean, I, I would never agree with that perception, but I've seen this discussion sometimes that society perceives us based on the role we have due to our den gender. And it's oversimplifying, it's wrong, you know, no question. It is, but it's the situation we I face agree. sometimes. I, agree. I, I, I don't know, for me, if I see a woman doing that, I think, well, about mm. time. Yes, <laughs> but the question is how do men perceive that woman who's yeah. being like, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. One, one of the things that I was just gonna talk about, uh, Josh's comment way, 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 way long ago, and then I'll come back to this uh, pay issue. Um, I've worked in large organisations which had very strong uh, commitment to women in IT and when I had staff who basically said I don't want to work with so and so because she's a woman, I just said well I have to train everybody, I'm going to train everybody, if you don't want to be a part of my team you're out. At the end of the day we should never ever blame the woman for the negative reactions of some men which is the thing that Josh was saying, you get hurt for having a quota system or whatever, and it's, it's like racism. You basically have to call it out. You have to say that it's not okay. We're not going to respond to that. We're going to do this. And to my mind, that also comes back to the pay equality thing. In Australia, we have a thing where people don't talk about pay. And this is actually established where women don't know what their male colleagues are being paid, so they don't know what to ask for. So I know that as a manager, we paid everybody the same sort of levels of you know two, two and a half percent bonuses every year or whatever, but the pay base was different. And to my mind, that's something that needs to change. People need to talk openly about what they get paid so that there is no hidden differential. Because over time, that pay, that pay difference, you know, someone at a senior level might be $50,000 worth off a year for the same work, and that's not okay. That doesn't fit capital. Well, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, sometimes uh, the company's policy cannot reveal your salary to others. So in that but case, it is you know, uh, something so, which is confidential. Not in Silicon Valley. Not, not in corporate America. No way. Well, not yeah. if you're working for the same thing. But I don't know how much my co-workers make. Yeah, but definitely there is the thing where when I was taking my first job out of college, my uh, male counterparts at school had to tell me to go negotiate for it because I was like, actually I'm happy with that. They were like, well, that's probably the same first offer they gave everybody, but two other people from our class who are joining the same team probably negotiated for the first offer, so you have to go and do that. But you gotta, go, you gotta fight for your but money. For yeah. me, I was like, well, I'm happy with the offer that you made me, so I didn't see a reason to ask for more because I was like, I can't believe you want to hire me and it's a great team. And you're, you know, that I'm, that's kind of like the number I was thinking of. But if no one would have told me that actually there is more room and you should ask for it, because why not? Because everyone else is going to, and that's going to go how much you And if there's more room, maybe they should just just give everyone the maximum they can give. Why? <laughs> yeah. We've got, we've got another. Yeah, there's a few more. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Most global IT innovations coming out of America and coming out of Silicon Valley right now. This is but but by the way, I disagree with that statement. Yeah. I think there's an awful lot of really great stuff, for example, coming out of Europe that I think, in many ways, rivals what's coming out of the valley. I agree. I'm just saying financially, where the venture capital is flowing, yep. the financial money is flowing. It's I, I, I think you know that that is a factual thing. Yeah. At the moment, where the money is, is also where the most innovation is, and it is still there. Sorry. Have you guys seen where the 
where you've had female employees not negotiate for a job offer. It, I didn't do it. It's not a Let me be very thing. clear. Like, I mean, I, 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 when I first got this opportunity at KPN, um, the way that I got this job, and I, I'll be really open about it, um, I got called. I had just had a third a child, so I wasn't planning on changing anything in my life. I was working at Verizon. And so I got called on a, from a headhunting company called Egon Zender, and I said, well, you know, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not, it's too complex. I've got a job already. I'm going to go back to it. I know it. I've, I've done it. It's, it's good. And KPN was just hacked. So I knew that whatever the hell I was getting into is going to be a big pile of poo and stinky. So that meant a lot of, you know, had a, and I already had a, a, a child, and I knew that from the other two, that meant lots of uh, months of no sleep. So how was I going to do a new job, new baby, no sleep, and lots of, you know, work in a very big company of 20,000 people? So I, um, I first said no, but then they called me back and they said, you're right. You're probably not the right person for the job. It's a very political environment. It's really difficult. You're a very senior level person. So then um, it wasn't the money. It was the fact that someone told me that I couldn't do it. So the the point is that when they got me the the actual salary offer, I I, I wasn't I couldn't even be bothered to look at it. I signed it right away uh, because I wanted to do the challenge that they thought I couldn't do. And we're now three years after I I took the job. And KPN is recognized. In fact, in the last strategy session, our CEO said, "Now we have the internal security on order." to all of our stakeholders, everything else. And this is, uh, Dylan, I, I hate to kind of toot own horn thing, <laughs> but what do you think of KPN when you think of KPN and security? I think you guys are doing a good job. I mean, so far, at least with the black phone stuff and, you know, the uh, data security address and stuff, I mean, you, you have made a difference, so. And our hacking team is really good. We just competed in the DEF CON. Uh, we came out of nowhere, okay? We had no team. And in the DEF CON qualifiers with 800 teams, we came in in the top 30. Well done. We've only got a couple of minutes left, so I think there is, no, this is two more questions, so we'll try yeah, and get them. Yeah, like, in. going back to Shosh question, I think, like, in terms of, say, women in AppSec and what OWASP can do, what are sort of actionable items that you would like to see happening? Because we talk about conferences and that, you know, women are not picked with, I don't know, creating, like, or in sort of, helping women to be in the selection committee be something that is, uh, you know, I don't know, sort of possible to do at, you know, at the organizing committee. Like, what other actions we could do? I think blind CFP is a great idea. Yeah, I, lo yeah. I think that, that, what you, that point that you made, that was excellent. And double blind, that encourages a lot of uh, female interest, that's excellent. Okay. innovations in whole aspects of life that are being uh, addressed through IT in the way that they need to be. Uh, citizens' uh, rights, uh, voting, and all of that. You know, not just, um, because a lot of these in industries have a lot of inherent challenges themselves in terms of privacy, in terms of distributions. There are a number of, so I think going out of the comfort zone uh, is also important that there are meaningful, uh, well-paying, maybe not as high, but well-paying work in these other areas, and there's a lot of innovation. In and uh, I think that's one thing that, that it doesn't all have to be from this uh, high-end corporate or even academic established academia. You know, more hackers that are doing innovation with uh, uh, the homeless. Societal changes, basically. Yeah. Yeah. New yeah. languages, for yeah. example. Yeah. I think uh, the guys from Rocksack, Random Hacks of Kindness, uh, they <laughs> have hackathons <laughs> for societal change and stuff. Cool. Yeah. They seem to have a lot of female participants that yeah. participate yeah. in yeah. that hackathon you, as well. I think you'll find a lot of energy and innovation, but also in setting up businesses that are uh, operating under different principles. Mm. Uh, and these need to be foregrounded because I think uh, more and more corporate model is just one model. And now individuals can be as uh, most entrepreneurs that are single individuals are women. 
Did you know what Melanie's doing at Radically Open Security? Because she just pretty much embodies everything you just said. We can talk afterwards. <laughs> Maybe there was a, oh, okay, there's a question in the back. Then it's back. Uh, I'll just rally to, to Joshua again. And I'm um, going to ask you, what can we do? I'm, I want to talk about more about means, because the blind CFP is it's a good idea, but the problem um, I see from my point of view is that there are few women actually in AppSec in general. In OASP, I've seen maybe really four or five Ladies, They're probably all in this room. Not, not, not today, I'm not talking about today, <laughs> but yesterday, you know, women I've exchanged with, uh, so yesterday it was really one girl with, with whom I talked about technical stuff, so, or two there was. But, uh, so the problem, it's from a statistic point of view, and I'm, and I'm really a statistic oddity, you know, I'm multicultural, I'm multi-religious, uh, I'm, I'm not an engineer. So when I, when I looked for a, for a job, that was really statistically impossible. But let's talk about statistic. If we do a blind, a blind, a blind picking blindly, uh, you won't have as many chances to get a full board of men or a full board of women. Uh, getting back to, to the fact that we are in, in security. You know, uh, back in the days when we were all chatting with our, with our avatars and Facebooks and LinkedIn and selfies and, and et cetera, we were just, we were just pseudos, you know, we were just nicknames and nobody cared and we'd work. So I, I know that there are many, many ladies, many men um, in word with good technical capabilities. So if they, if they submit to, to OASP and by chance and some crazy oddities, only men get picked up. Will it be? Will it? Will it not feel awkward? Is not the quota system here good? Is not the fact that regulating, regulating what what uh, Joshua talked about, maybe maybe good in this point? And I'm not telling you to regulate to regulate only women dresses, but like we do in France, you know, for religion purposes, we regulate everything, every religion. We don't want to see any. But that's maybe the the bad part. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I think I, I don't think people caught that nuance. The nice thing about double blind is it's totally merit based on merit. We have been quite quite a few females for that, for that particular conference. But the downside is unless there's submissions, you're really not changing the overall ratio. Yeah. So was that RSA that you're referring to? No, it wasn't. Oh. Um, I, RSA is a very complicated one. It's a much smaller conference. Okay. But if in the blind one you had a lot more women actually talking, does that show that there probably is a bias towards mm -hmm. men? Mm -hmm. Subconscious or whatever, but 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 I I think we need to answer the question because we're running out of time. Yeah, actually, if I may ask, yeah, um, I mean, one thing is who we select, but what can we do to get more submission and more engagement from women yeah. in the community to come to OWASP and and like so we can actually also then select them. I mean, one thing yeah, is yeah, I think they need to yeah, them, be involved in the community first. If we don't get so many. And if we could increase the, the, the oh, pie, yeah. uh, the, the, the number of people, then we can also have more diversity in the mm -hmm. community. I think it's so what do you think can we do to make that? I think it's outreach, actually. It's actually yeah. making yeah. a point to actually go and find them. You know? They're yeah. not, it's not impossible. It, you just have to make it a point to actually go and reach out to them and make them aware that you're looking for content as well. And why don't they come and speak? Because they're working on X, Y, and Z, which you find interesting. Yeah. That's usually what we do in, in the end. I mean, we so have a CIP selection process, but to get people to submit. We actually go and invite people to submit. Oh, we do so, that too. Yeah, so but maybe, we are, maybe we need more outreach then, so to get more women to submit. You know right? what you did when you had the all uh, women, women keynote, yeah. keynotes? That was actually brilliant, because I've never seen so many women just walking around a conference. And I think it's a two-track solution. I think you need a temporary solution that you're going to do the first X amount of time until you have uh, reached some sort of normalcy. And then once you've had that normalcy, then the, du the fully double blind is the only thing that's really fair. Uh, when it comes to it, it should be a meritocracy. We should be looking at quality and not Definitely. gender. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. There could be okay. bias in the subject matter itself. So there of course. Ultimate but the subject matter is going to be relevant to the conference. Yeah. So, 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 so on, on that bombshell, it, we're running out of time on, on this track. <laughs> I'm happy to let it, let it run on. Oh, but yeah. for those people that want to go to lunch, uh, it is being served. And if you walk out, please remember to put, on, put in a green or a red card in the box. Um, if you guys want to continue this discussion, I'm um, fine. The room is uh, f available for the next And uh, just one time. more last comment then. Your question about the selection committee influencing, that is a very easy outreach. And that will ensure that at least 
for that part, that those, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, there's more women just getting involved at an organization level, and they might start doing other things and yeah. just encourage other people. Just, just on a closing note, I wanted to point out how <laughs> the, the majority of operations in OWASP is actually also female. So we, we, it's not like we, we would like uh, discriminate against that. Actually, we, we very much want to encourage that. And that's also the reason why we have this panel, because we feel this is really important and we want to increase the diversity of our community in gender and in other dimensions as well. So this is really very close to our heart and we, we, we just need to know what we can do. <laughs> we need to learn from you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's really good. That's really good. Okay, I think this panel needs, to, needs an applause for moderating a difficult topic. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you for coming and thanks to you, the audience as well. We wouldn't have had the good discussion without you. So and thanks for you all taking the time to come here. And the organizers as well for having the, making the conference available. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good comments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. but the, uh, yeah. Sorry if I ran.